Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, we are going to go over treatment options or treatment ideas on how to reduce the severity of a spastic foot. So spasticity can occur after damage to the brain or the spinal cord and it is really just when muscles become overactive or you have muscles that contract involuntarily. Today we're focusing on the foot and the ankle. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you're probably already familiar with whether or not you have this condition. So I'm going to briefly explain what this is and then give you treatment options on how to stretch the ankle out, how to work on standing and minimize the severity of the foot rolling to the outside. And hopefully once you put these things into practice, it'll ultimately improve your walking. But before we dive into that, if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Fun little fact for you, I just looked at some of my analytics and 60% of the views on this channel are from people that are not subscribed. So if you've been watching my channel for a while and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. It really does help this channel in the YouTube algorithm. So help me to get these videos to the people that really need them and that will really benefit from this content. So now enough about that. Let's go ahead and dive into this topic of a spastic foot. So first and foremost, we are talking about spasticity in the muscles that point the foot and make the foot turn inward. Those are usually the most common muscles that become overactive or develop the spasticity after a stroke or a brain injury. And typically what will happen is your foot's either going to roll to the outside when you stand and you walk, but it's also really part of a whole leg pattern usually. So maybe when you're laying down, you feel that your entire leg just really locks out in extension. Those would all be signs that you might have a spastic foot and ankle. So as I mentioned, this is an involuntary contraction of the muscles that point the foot down, but there's more to the mechanism that's causing the foot to roll to the outside. And again, like I'd mentioned, it's really a pattern in the entire leg. And many times people do develop a little bit of spasticity or overactivity in the muscles that externally rotate the hip. And the reason that's important is it's going to help you to understand why I'm choosing some of the exercises that I'm choosing later on for you to do. But usually the muscles that rotate the hip outward are a little bit overactive or tight or a combination of the two. So when the knee goes outward, it puts the weight to the outside of the foot, which if you know anything about physics, yes, I do talk about physics a lot, and it is important to really understand how you, the forces are being applied to your body. And so I do go into this a little bit because if you can correct some of these forces and put them where they're supposed to be, then that alone exercises aside does eliminate some of the abnormal movement patterns that come along with a stroke or a brain injury. But now back to the foot. So if the knee goes out, now you're taking that force and you're putting it to the outside of the foot. So it's kind of like if you had a bunch of people standing in a canoe and you told everyone in that canoe to go stand on one side of the canoe, the canoe's going to tip over. Same thing. So if the knee goes out to the side and your body goes over to the side, then those forces go to the outside and it causes that foot to turn in the therapy world or if you want the medical term for that, that's supination. So the foot actually supinates. So the solution is a few different things. We need to bring those forces back to the, either the middle of the foot or ideally even the inside of the foot. And we do need to stretch, stretch, stretch the ankles. And the reason is, is because I know a lot of you, whether you'll admit it to me, if you were my patient, most don't admit it to me, but whether you admit it or not, do not wear your AFO when you're not walking. So most of the time your foot stays pointed. In addition to that, when we sleep, just the nature of how our sheets and our blankets are on our legs keeps that foot pointed. In addition to that, you have this involuntary pointing that's going on all the time, even when it's in the brace. In addition to that, you have this overactive stretch reflex. So I went into a lot of depth as to what that is in my video on spasticity. So I'll put a link for that below. Long story short, stretching and lengthening out those muscles and those tendons is super 
duper important. So I cannot stress this enough. Stretching, 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 so important. If you don't have a night splint, you really do need to invest in a good night splint. And what a night splint does is it basically keeps your foot flexed up. So you can get like a prolonged stretch while you're sleeping, while you're watching television. It really is great. Again, a lot of people don't like it because it is a little bit painful when your foot is trying to point and you're, you've got it in this boot but there's a ton of different ones on the market. I'll put a link in the description below for the one that is absolutely the only one that works. I've ordered a bunch of different ones where that strap is placed over the ankle is critical. It needs, in most, it's a little bit too high. It needs to be down over the, more towards the foot. And this is the only one, the link in the description, is the only one that I think works. So again, that link will be in the description below. In addition to this prolonged stretching that you can do with the splint, there's a few different ways that you can stretch the ankle in standing. So I really like these foam wedges. I think they are essential. There's so many different exercises that I've shown with them. They are a great addition to your little home gym that I've been going over in other videos as to how to set up your home gym. But you wanna stretch your ankle in a few different positions if you can stand if you can't stand night splint all day long but if you can stand then you want to put your foot on this incline with it straight so now we're really stretching the muscles that just point the foot the gastrocnemius the soleus and a little bit of the posterior tibialis but to really target that posterior tibialis you're also going to want to stretch it with the wedge sideways and then that'll really target that posterior tibialis which is also a muscle that is usually highly involved in a spastic foot and ankle. Now, remember I talked about those forces. So in addition to the stretching, we also need to address where those forces are applied to that foot when you do load that leg or when you do weight bear on that leg or when you do pick up your uninvolved leg. Where are those forces? We don't want them to the outside because remember that canoe, you're just gonna tip that canoe over or you're just gonna roll that ankle. We need to bring them back to the inside. So. We're gonna use one of these blue straps. Again, I've shown this in other videos and I really don't mind sounding like a broken record in these cases because I think a lot of you all move on too quickly and you don't really f spend enough time on these really foundational activities. And then you go to walk and the ankle rolls. So this other activity, you're gonna do sit to stands. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring the knees. So now we're trying to internally rotate the hips. So we're gonna bring the knees together to the inside of the foot and you're gonna work on sit to stands. Now the reason this is so critical is usually that spastic pattern kicks in or that foot is gonna point when you're trying to extend the knee. So think about that. When you go to stand on that leg to take a step, what are you doing? You're extending that knee and that's when that foot rolls. So we're trying to recreate this one little phase of the walking cycle. So extending the knee while keeping those forces to the inside of the foot. So you're just going to work on sit to stands. Now, if you can't do it, or you feel like you're shifting all of your weight to your stronger leg, just start from a higher surface. Put some books on a chair and push the chair up against a wall something to just get you up a little bit higher and you can do this exercise all day long the trick is or the key is is to not feel because a lot of you can feel all the pressure on the outside of that foot do this until you can feel like there's less pressure on the outside of the foot and more pressure to the inside of the foot and then if you wanted to add the wedge i love adding the wedge when i'm working with someone on this in my office um, it just really reinforces that weight or that load going to the inside of the foot and it kind of writes that canoe so it kind of moves all the people to the other side of the canoe which is kind of what we want we don't mind if the foot pronates a little bit now if you had an orthopedic injury yes this is going to create a very pronated foot if you did this but if your foot is severely supinated as is the case with spasticity we do overcorrect for that a little bit and the incline does help with that and then I even take this one step further sometimes and I have people practice walking with their knees strapped together like I said it's just a natural tendency for the knee to go out to the side due to some other movement problems that are going on at the hip so I do have people practice walking with the strap 
with their knees strapped together to again reinforce keeping those knees to the inside, keeping the weight to the inside of the foot, and keeping that canoe or your foot upright. So now this video would not be complete if I didn't also talk about the toes curling. So a ton of you asked me questions about the toes curling. So I have done a video specifically on a DIY, DIY tool that I made to help work on extending the toes while standing on the leg. I'll put a link for that in the description below. But then in addition to that, I love these toe separators. It really does just help to keep the, reduce some of the spasticity or the tone in the muscles, the the intrinsic muscles of the foot. So I'm a huge fan. There's two different ones that I like. There's one that's much bigger and bulkier if you just wanna stretch the ankle. Uh, sometimes I do add this when I'm working with a patient when they're standing, but of course this one does not fit inside of a shoe, but you get a really good stretch. And then there's another one that's uh, very thin and low profile that can be worn inside of a pair of shoes. And again, separating those toes is one way that you can re reduce some of that overactivity of those muscles in the toes that want them to, that cause them to curl up. And one more thing that I really need to mention is bracing. Now I am gonna do an entire video on bracing, but your AFO or your ankle foot orthoses is so, so, so important. If you stand and you feel like all the pressure is on the outside of your foot, then every time you take a step, your brain is recording and learning everything you're doing right now. So you're really just reinforcing that foot to roll when you take a step. But in addition to that, you're damaging your ankle. So there, you're stretching out all the ligaments and everything on the outside of the ankle that are gonna give it stability. So you definitely, definitely want to wear your AFO. This isn't gonna be the last time I talk about this. I actually have already recorded another video where I talk about the importance of an AFO if you do have spasticity in your foot. So that's gonna be coming, but it's so, so critical. Now, if you do find that you're having a lot of pressure, a lot of people, the bone on the outside of the ankle becomes red and there's a lot of pressure there and people don't like to wear their AFO because it hurts. If that's the case, go back to your orthotist. Go back to the person that made the brace. That is their specialty. That's what they do for a living. They can fix that. Now. I'm a physical therapist, so I'm not going to tell any orthotist or your orthotist or anyone what to do. And I don't suggest you go in there and say, you know, this random therapist on YouTube said this. However, I'm not a fan of flaring that section out, which I have seen that. A lot of orthotists, if you go in there and you see you have pain on the outside of your ankle, they're just gonna keep creating a hole there to accommodate that. But then what's happening is it does allow your foot to supinate inside the brace. I prefer either going to an AFO that has a, what they call an SMO inside of it. I think that stands for, man, I should have looked this up before I, I recorded this, but I think it stands for submalleolar orthosis, but it's like a little boot that goes in inside the AFO huge fan of that for so many reasons. You put this thing on first and then you slide your leg into the AFO, but it makes your foot, it holds your foot a little bit straighter so it's easier to put your AFO on. But then again, it just does give you a little bit more it gives the foot a little bit more stability and makes it a little bit harder for the foot to roll to the outside. Therefore, you're keeping that bony piece on the outside of your ankle from bumping up against the edge of the brace. So huge fan of that. And then I also really like a flare. I like to call it like a little outrigger, but it just is basically like a little kickstand that they attach to the outside of your shoe. It basically is very similar to the stretch I did at the beginning where I had the incline on the outside of the foot or I had the wedge on the outside of the foot, they basically build that on the outside of your shoe. And remember, as we talked about the forces, it's gonna hopefully, theoretically, and it does work in a lot of cases, bring the weight to the inside of the foot, dropping that force to the inside uh, and almost kind of forcing the foot to pronate. So huge fan of these lateral flares. And that is it for today's video. I hope this video was helpful. You guys keep doing what you're doing. Again, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. 60% of you are not subscribed. So hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, comment below with anything in this video that didn't make sense or any suggestions you have for future videos. I enjoyed spending time time with you all today and I hope you all have a fabulous day.